Well, I think we're good to get started here. We're about two after 10. So uh, welcome everybody. Happy Sunday to all of you. Um, we are, I think what, week seven now of uh, being home and enjoying church this way. And um, every week we are learning and adjusting and we're back to the webinar setting this week. So for those of you who are on, um, we're glad that you're here. Uh, you'll be um, just in attendance mode for now. And then um, we're going to be sharing a link for the post-service connection here shortly. Uh, so be on the lookout for that in the chat. And then we'll also post that link to Facebook. Um, we are, we're glad that you're, you're here and we're glad that um, you chose to attend with us this morning. Um, if you would like to chat during the service, we encourage everyone to talk and to share and uh, to communicate that way. And so if you're looking at the chat window and you have the two, um, you can click the drop down. You can select all panelists and attendees. This way your messages go to everybody. Um, otherwise, if you just have attendees, it just goes, or two panelists, it just goes to us that are uh, the panelists on the call. So again, we're so glad that you're here. Uh, so happy to have everyone. And uh, John, when you're ready, um, we're ready for worship.
Oh, yeah. 
Thank you, worship team, for that. Uh, we're just grateful that um, you all have the talent and the skill to do that every week and week out. Thank you, John, for organizing and for putting up the video and uh, editing everything together. It's, it's really great. And I really, I'm sure everyone else does too, but I really enjoy worship every uh, week with each of you. So uh, this is kind of our announcement portion of the service. Um, if you didn't know, um, we are doing a, uh, if you're interested, there's a 9 a.m. prayer service or prayer meeting that happens before service on Sundays. This week, we posted a link on Facebook, uh, and we'll do so next week as well. So if you'd like to join the group that um, meets to pray before the service, uh, you can do so, and we'll post that link out on Facebook. And I think uh, Judy also emails that out to those who regularly attend, and so there's multiple ways to get connected there. And then uh, as we've done the last few weeks, um, we are having our post-service connection following today's service and so I posted the link in the chat. I also posted the link to Facebook and tagged it to the top of the page and so if you'd like to join us immediately following this service there's a separate link. Uh, since this week we're back to the webinar format we uh, have a separate link and a separate meeting where everybody can join and uh, get on video and, and turn off or turn your audio on and say hi and, and connect. Um, it's been a great time of uh, hanging out and seeing each other and just uh, connecting um, in a different way. And then uh, you may have heard earlier in the call this morning, but um, we now have an East Point YouTube page that we're really excited about. And so we're really trying to uh, enhance our digital footprint throughout um, the uh, internet sphere, as some might call it, or the internets. And so uh, if you search YouTube for East Point Community Church DE, uh, you can find us. And what we would love to ask you to do is to go to YouTube, search us, uh, and then subscribe. Um, right now, uh, we have uh, two subscribers. And we need to get to 100. And once we get to 100, we can have a custom URL that matches our name. So it's still easy to find us, but um, we're going to be posting the videos that JD has been doing midweek, other content, and then we'll also be posting the sermons there as well. So this is something that you can uh, share with those who might not have Facebook. Um, they can go to YouTube and watch the sermons following today's service. This will be posted on there. And then sermons um, going forward will be there as well. We'll still post them to Facebook too, uh, but that's just one more uh, medium to do so. And then just as a reminder, we always um, are posting updates and all the links to all the services and everything on Facebook and our Instagram accounts. Um, so those are the big new things. And then uh, now is the time for the offering that we are asking for. So every week, um, I just share the screen and uh, show everyone, um, you know, if you're unfamiliar with our website, how to do so. Um, while it's up, just as a reminder, this is what our YouTube page is. So East Point Community Church DE. If you search that, you can find the channel. There's two videos on there right now. Uh, if you have not gotten a chance, as I mentioned earlier in the service, to get to the new property, uh, you don't have to actually go there either. JD has put together a tour of the house that's on the property and then a tour of the land. And so you can watch both of those and uh, see what the property and the house looks like. Um, so I would encourage you to go do that. Um, those videos are also out on Facebook as well. So if you uh, can't get to YouTube, you can do that as well. Uh, for giving, if you go to our website, which is eastpoint.org, uh, you can go directly to the link, which is eastpoint.org forward slash give. 
or you can go to just the eastpoint.org website and you can click on the give button on the top right hand side and that's going to bring you into the giving page and if you click give online it's going to take you into the uh, giving app that we use and so you can select the general fund um, or any of the other funds you can put in the amount that you'd like to donate and then you can give by card or by bank account and then hit submit and it's that easy uh, i'm sure jd will probably touch on this as well but um and those of you who know uh, there was a donor that committed to match giving up to i believe it was ten thousand for those who need help during this time and so i believe if you go into here and select other you can mark down that you would like to give funds towards that fund and those uh, that money will be set aside for those who need it and who have been impacted um, by everything that's been happening recently with the coronavirus. Um, so I would encourage you to pray about that. And uh, before we transition to uh, GD, I'll pray to bless the offering. God, we're just grateful and we're thankful for who you are, God. We're grateful to know that uh, you are in control, God, that you have um, just blessed us, God, with the love that you give to us day in and day out. And uh, we ask right now that you would provide comfort and peace to all of our members, God, all of our families, all of our friends, Lord. You give us strength and you give us perseverance through this time, God. We just pray right now for East Point as we are in this time of digital meeting, God, but we still have physical needs with the building and our new land. We ask that you continue to bless those who volunteer their time to support and help. And we ask um, as we move forward, God, that you would just bless all the efforts to transition from the old building to our new space, Lord. We ask right now that you please bless this offering that those are about to give, that you would just bless the funds as they come into the church, that they'd be used for your honor and your glory, and that you would bless those who give as they've given sacrificially, Lord. We're just grateful to be here today, to be here on Zoom with each other, and uh, really excited for the post-service connection and the time together, and excited for the message that you're about to bring through JD. And you're going to be praying. Amen. JD. All righty. There we are. Okay, welcome, and uh, hopefully we've had the March winds, and the, we're having the April showers right now, so hopefully you're getting ready for the May flowers. They're starting to pop up a little bit. We're seeing some green. Hopefully we'll start to see some red and yellow and blue and all the flower colors coming out. Um, even if you can't leave your house, maybe you can look out the window and take a look at them. So they're there. So we are, we're back, and we are still... We're going to be looking again a little bit at this whole issue of um, of mourning or of uh, lamenting, but we're going to look at it a little different perspective today. And it's uh, last week we started with Psalm 13. This week we're just going to multiply that by 10, a little logarithmic Sunday here, and start. We're going to be in uh, chapter 130 of Psalm. So, um, so we're going to be looking at that, and I I, I know that there's been quite a variety of ways that people are being affected by all of this. I know some of you are going nuts with being home and you're, you know, just whether it's your family driving you crazy or maybe you driving the family crazy or whatever's going on, that's, you know, it can be hard. Maybe you're bored because you just can't think of what to do. You need to work on that. You got to get a little bit more creative. Um, maybe you're lonely because there's nobody there for you to interact with, and that's hard. And I've also noticed that there's a, another category of people who are just running like crazy, um, who are doing a lot more. I've talked to several of you who, because of either layoffs or things of that nature, that some people are, so, which has some people at home trying to figure out what to do with their time, others of you have picked up a lot of extra work, and you're doing more than usual. You're running around quite a bit. I know that all of this stuff has seemed to have added an extra layer of work to my job, to Judy's job. So we've been, we've been staying very busy here. It's, it's been kind of fun being uh, together a lot more than what we normally are. So that's been, that's been nice, but it also keeps us really busy. So whatever category you're in, you might be, you might be looking for things to do, or you might be looking for, hey, when do I get a chance to sit down and catch your breath? whichever one of those categories, there's much to be learned during this time and a lot to do about it. So it's, so we're going to look at that. Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure when this thing is going to come to a resolution. I've, we hear all different sorts of things. We do know that when they start to phase back in, the opening up of the state, that churches are in phase one. So we will take a look at that and see what we're going to do with that. We don't know where we're going to be 
building wise yet. We do still have the, the warehouse that we normally meet in and maybe we're gonna be back there. Um, we are actually working to get out of that lease so that we can start to save some money and take that money and apply it towards uh, renovations of the new place so we can be meeting there. But we will, we'll get all that figured out. That's one of the things that I'm running around trying to take care of and get figured out. So hopefully that'll get taken care of. Uh, like I said, we're gonna start with Psalm 130 today. And, and Psalm 130, it is a lament, but it's not a personal lament. It is not David crying out because of what he's going through. This is more of a cry from the, from the community where the country cries out and what they have going on. So we're gonna start with just the first couple of verses in Psalm 130. And he says, out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. And this is, uh, what I like here is the fact that he is crying out. And I think that one of the things that we can overlook easily is the importance of prayer during these times. This is, I know a lot of things we can start to feel like, well, there's not enough time to pray. You know, I'm too busy. I, so we, we get by or our prayer life consists of thank you for the food. Amen. Um, you know, and this is a chance to slow it down a little bit and spend some time in prayer for whatever is going on. Uh, I know that Judy and I are trying to have, like in the morning after we have breakfast together, we, we have a time of prayer together. And it's just something that we're just trying to put into our routine. And hopefully the types of things that will stick around after we're back out into the world, uh, including eat breakfast together, which is kind of nice. We did that some of the times before, but now we're doing it every day. And that's, that's very nice. But, you know, the prayer is, we, we need to take whatever's going on. And he said, I cry out to God. He's crying out. It's, it's not merely a, a rote prayer. It's not simply a thing of, you know, hey, here's a, here's a thought that I have. Or, you know, it's like, you know, Lord, give us travel mercies. Or some of the things that if we grew up in the church, we've all learned these quick little token prayers that we can do before a meal, before we travel, um, maybe before bed, whatever, whatever, your, whatever your time is for the, the tokenism prayer, which is what, the way I tend to think about it. There are prayers that we can get halfway through and before we realize that we've you know, even been praying because it's just so automatic for us. I remember praying one time at church um, when I was younger, and I finished the prayer off with a thank you for this food, amen. And were, we weren't having a meal, but it was just so automatic that as part of the um, part of the prayer system that we would use. And so sometimes it helps to slow down and think about it. And what I like too is, is the psalmist is saying, Lord, hear my voice, hear me, listen to me. He's crying out saying, I've got something I want you to hear. And so if we're going to ask God to hear our voice, let's give him something worth listening to. That doesn't mean we have to have a fancy prayer. It means we need to have an honest prayer. We need to talk about what is going on. We need to say what's happening in our lives. He says, be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. Now, it's interesting that he's asking for mercy. Well, why is that? Well, as we look at the next couple of verses, we see some of the reasons. He says, if you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness that you may be feared. So we say, God, if you, if you kept track of all of, our, of all of our sins, our shortcomings, our failures, none of us could stand before you. There's, there's no one that is able to do that. Like we see later on, he says, there is not, no one that is righteous, nobody that does good, not, not a single one, all of us are sinful and fall short. So he's saying, you know, and he said, be attentive to my cries for mercy. He's saying, Lord, I know, I know I don't deserve to have, to have your peace, to have your uh, good pleasure, but I'm asking for it all the same. I, I'm asking you, can you please help me? Because there's no way I can be good enough. I'm not going to measure up. So in spite of that, can you help me? Will you stand for me? Will you Will you forgive my iniquities? And he says, because we know that with you, you are a forgiving God. You overlook things. 
and we can fear you because you are in control. And the fear here isn't so much about being afraid, but it's a fear in the terms of the, the respect for who he is and what he does. And so he's basically saying with all of this, uh, God, you are, you are so far above me. You are someone who can control whether or not we get punished for our rights and wrongs. But we don't have to be afraid in that we go to him with the idea that, oh, he's going he's gonna to smack me down if I've done the wrong things. I know that it's a natural tendency, probably for all of us, that when we have caught ourselves into some pattern that we have tried very hard to get out of, and we're trying to get out of the pattern, but we've gotten ourselves to where we're, we're into it, that we feel like, I can't go to God. I just prayed about this, and I prayed about this, and I've asked forgiveness, and then here I am right back into it. How can I do this? And David, a man after God's own heart through the Psalms, is to basically letting us know. He says, you go to him and you say, I know that you're a forgiving God, that I, I, I can't stand before you clean, but I can come before you as your child and say, please help me. Please help me. I know that you helped me in this area before. I know that I failed. Here I am. I'm back. I'm asking for your help because you are a God that is forgiving. And so when you go into him with your prayers, you do that. And he follows this in the next verse, says, I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in his word, I hope. Now, this is, in fact, he emphasizes this, and like in the following verse, which I don't have up there for you, but the following verse would say, I watch, I wait for you more than the watchman waits for the morning. He's saying the people that are doing the night watch and they're, you know, they're, they're keeping their eyes out because they've got to look for the night, but they're anxious for the morning when they're off duty. He says, I wait for you more than that. This is about possibly one of the hardest things we do with God is wait on him because his timing isn't our timing. We, we want, we want to have whatever we want right now. I mean, I know that we're to the point as a society, and, I, and I, I've seen it myself, and I see it in those around me, that we look at the microwave and think, isn't there a faster way? You know, a meal that used to take me an hour, now I can do in 15 minutes, but now it's too slow. And I can make my popcorn in three minutes, but, but I don't feel like waiting three minutes because I, I might... In fact, we'll go sit down in between because three minutes is too long for us to stand waiting for our food. So we'll go and have a seat while we're waiting on that. And I know I'm all the time, I'll check my watch and whether I'm doing a pressure cooker or sous vide or whatever it is I'm doing, I'll look and say, okay, I've got a minute and a half here. That's enough time for me to go get one more thing done. I run to my computer, do one thing. I have an alarm set on my watch, we run back. We're always hurrying. We're always thinking that something needs to be done immediately. And he says, wait on the Lord. Wait. Be patient. God's timing is not ours. And sometimes he makes us wait because the most beneficial thing we can get right then is waiting, is developing those waiting skills, is growing our patience because we need to wait on the Lord. We've got this huge project before us with this house and this property and all that's going on there. And I look at it and I get excited because I think of all the things that can be done. But I know that it's all going to take time and a lot of time. We're going to be years in developing this land and the church there and the things that we're going to do. But I do believe that, that God brought this to us for a purpose. The way that we acquired it was just so, so God infused that I believe that God's got a purpose for us and he is going to carry that out. But we're going to have to wait. It may not all happen in our timing. Some of it may happen faster than we think, some of it much slower. But in all cases, our job is to wait. And part of how we do that is that we consistently, we go to God on our knees, we cry out to him, and then say, God, you know what I want, but I'm going to wait for you. Do this in your timing and in your way. Because ultimately, he is that this is what we're going to have to do anyway. We're going to have to wait. We can either learn from it and grow through the process, or we cannot. We can just struggle. Um, and, and it comes back to, again, like what we talked about last week, in, in verse 7 of Psalm 130, he says, For with the Lord 
there is steadfast love, and with him is plentiful redemption. And it's just so often it comes down to that, that God loves us, and he does so much for us. That, and we, we apply this standard sometimes to God, which we wouldn't apply anywhere else um, with, with our kids. And I think so often, because God identifies as our father for us to look and say, how do we feel with our kids? And you might have to go back to a time when they were young and cute to remember this, because uh, maybe right now you're thinking, oh, I just, you know, my kids are giving me such headaches. Hopefully not. Hopefully you're still enjoying them. I find that whatever age they're at, they still seem to be quite a joy to be around. But um, when you think about what would you do for your kids? And I think there's very little I wouldn't do for my kids. And I can't think of something that they could do that would cause me to stop loving them. And even when they're in the midst of whatever nonsense they might be involved with, when they come to me, my heart is totally open and receptive because they're my children, because I love them. And I want my love to be steadfast as God's love is steadfast. And if I, as a broken, fallen, flawed father can do that, how much more God? And when he, we come to him, what he sees is his beloved children. And so he, he just wants us to talk to him. Now, you might be those that say, well, why do I need to pray? God already knows everything. Um, well, he does know everything, but that's not the same. It's, it, we don't pray so we can inform God. We don't pray so that he knows what's on our mind. He does know what's on our mind. We pray for communication for connection. In the, in the movie about C.S. Lewis, whether or not this really happened in life or not is debated among some, but as he, he, he was caught praying by one of his colleagues, and they said something about, do you really think that prayer changes God? And he said, no, I think that prayer changes me. And I think that that's such a, a profound idea because I think it's true that the prayer does change us, not just because of it's some sort of a healthy exercise like wishful thinking or positive thinking, but because it's an interaction with the Holy God, that connection, for reasons that are hard to explain. I know I feel more connected to you guys after one of these services when we get a chance to have an interaction, especially for those of you that stick around for the thing afterwards. And I, I hope a lot of you do log into that because it is a great time to just see each other's face for a moment, to, to say hello, to just to reconnect. It changes us, it feels different, and it's, it's healing because God meant for us to be together. So I strongly encourage all of you, log into that next thing that we do, that, that getting together afterwards. It is a fun time, and it is just, just a chance to be social. So I, I encourage that because we feel different. We are changed internally, and even so much more so when we do that with God. When we just when we engage him, when our prayers are not just perfunctory as something that we've learned and wrotely done, but when we just stop and open our hearts to God and say, "Here I am. This is this is me. This is what I'm going through, God. Um, I'm asking for your help, and I'm leaving it all in your hands. I'll wait on you. I'll wait and take the time, but consistently going back to Him. I think that." One of the things that hopefully we're all going to come out of this time of uh, quarantine with is callous knees, that we will have spent enough time in prayer, that we will have, have changed our character by the time we get out of our homes, that we can really spend extra time praying. I know that for me, I, that I wake up very early most days. Um, I may fall back to sleep, but I wake up several times early, and I find that during that time is a great time to pray. I often will, will pray myself to sleep, um, maybe because I'm so boring in my prayer, I just fall asleep while doing it. But whatever the case, there's something nice about just sort of being able to, to just talk with God. It's, I don't do fancy prayers. I'm not an eloquent prayer. I'm just a guy talking to his father. And that's what I encourage for you. Just talk to God. Talk to him in real terms. If you're upset about something, tell him. If you're excited about something, tell him. If you're confused, it's a great place to ask. He tells us if we lack wisdom, to ask him, and that he will provide the wisdom. Um, so, and these are some of my most consistent prayers, is 
confession, rejoicing, confusion, and asking for wisdom. These are just things that I find I have to do daily because they're, they're important in order to maintain the system. So I encourage you during this time at home while you're in quarantine, work on your prayer life and see how you can get to where you are connecting with God on a personal level, not by doing the things at the moments you're expected to, not by doing the, the anticipated prayers, but by just being with him and letting him wash over you. So let's pray now. God, we do thank you that you are ready to listen to us, that you are open to what we have to say. And I pray, Lord, that, that we will, as a group, that we will just make it a priority to come to you and talk to you. Give us the, the courage and the, the awareness of time. Just bring it to our minds, because I know it's easy for us to just forget, think that, yeah, I'm going to pray a lot, and, and then just forget to pray, because we've gotten out of the habit of that. Help us develop new habits that we can come and talk to you and feel strengthened by that relationship. In Christ's name, amen. All right, Josh, I think we're ready to switch back to you to carry on for the next part. Yep. All right. Thank you, JD. Yeah, so I posted the link in chat for our post service connection. That's also the top post on our Facebook page. So um, thank you all for joining us today. We'll be back here again next week with the link posted for the webinar and then um, hopefully we'll see you soon in the post service connection. So God bless. Have a great Sunday and a great week. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye, everyone.